Hello students, today we are going to learn about synectics. You are not familiar with this term synectics, right? But as you can see in this visual, the person is facing some problem and that is why he is thinking. Then he, he has got some idea and then he is solving his problem. It means this model has to do something with solving problems and creating some new idea. Now to understand this term synectics, just observe this visual. What do you see in this visual? So many different things are joined together here. There is a girl, her face is clearly seen, but her entire body is of a fish. Now fish lives in water. But still that lady, she is holding that big carrot as if she is on the ground and besides that there are so many stars around. So, so many different things are joined together, that is exactly the meaning of synectics. William Gordon, he developed this technique called synectics and this is for generating new ideas. The original word is synecticos that means again joining two or more different things together to generate new idea, creative idea. This particular model synectics, it is from information processing family. It is for creating new ideas and it is a beautiful piece of writing actually. William Gordon has given nice description of this model. According to Gordon, everything is relevant. Making the things relevant, that is our creativity, that lies in our imagination. Let us take one example. Now ordinary vest waste papers and many things. So, we always think that they are useless, but from the same waste, biological waste, we can prepare gas, we can prepare manure or we can make many beautiful things by using different type of waste. Now, according to Gordon, there are three levels of mind. First outermost level is conscious level. We are always aware about this level, but at the same time we have evaluation at the back of our mind. The moment we generate new idea, our mind starts thinking about evaluation of it, whether it is feasible, whether it is practical, whether I can really implement this idea and that is why if we just go by this conscious level, we are not going to create or implement new idea. The undermost third level is unconscious level, we are not aware about it. But what is in between these two ideas, these levels conscious and unconscious? Gordon says there is pre-conscious level in the middle and here the creative ideas can be generated. In this pre-conscious level, we are not completely aware or we do not use evaluation, we do not criticize and sometimes we keep ourselves away from the problem. Now this model has three assumptions. First is that this creativity generating new ideas there is nothing mystic about it and that is why everybody can create new ideas. Only thing is proper training is important, proper mindset is important. Secondly, this process of generating ideas, it is same for all the fields. It is not that uh, an artist will think differently and an industrialist will think differently. The process is basically same, that is 
another assumption of Gordon. And besides that, the third thing is that thinking in group is beneficial because so many different ideas will come from the group and if we combine those ideas, then we will get a nice idea which will be really practicable, which will be innovative and which will definitely solve our problem under consideration. Another two assumptions are, there is place for emotions. Usually in logical thinking, we think that there is no place for emotions. We should not get carried away by emotions. Emotions always harm our thinking, but here we have to be more emotional. That is the assumption and besides that, you have to generate many associations. If you associate your problem with something else, you can create new ideas. Now this process of synaptics, what assumptions are there, we will just repeat them. Creativity is not abstract concept. Now emotional component is more important than the intellectual one. The irrational more important than the rational one and that is why it goes away from logical thinking. Emotional and irrational elements must be understood in order to increase the probability of success in the problem solving situation. For generating new ideas, there are three principles or three processes suggested by Gordon. First is detachment. If you are really engrossed in the problem, you would not be able to probably think about new ideas. So detachment from the problem. Second is deferment, deferment of judgment, deferment of evaluation and third is speculation. We will see one by one, detachment. So detach yourself from the problem by taking rest by engaging yourself in some different activity. We will see some examples. You are familiar with Archimedes. Now he was given the task of finding out volume of any object without actually measuring. So how to do that? So he was facing this problem, he was not getting solution, then he came home he entered into his bathtub and suddenly he realized that once we enter into fully bathtub, then immediately some water comes out. That means the object replaces the water. So there must be some connection between this replaced water and volume of the object. That idea immediately striked his mind and he could think of this way and that Archimedes principle we are all aware about. We have learnt it in the science. Another example is of Kekule. He wanted to visualize the structure of benzene. He did not find any solution to it. Then he slept over the problem. In his dream, he dreamt that some snakes are putting their tails into their own mouth. So it was just ring like structure. The idea came to his mind and he could find benzene ring. So these are some of the examples of detachment, how detachment is helpful for generating new ideas. Another principle is deferment. Deferment is postponing something, not considering just now. So that evaluation, that seizure of evaluation, criticism, it always harms generating creative ideas. And that is why while generating phase, in generating phase, one should not evaluate, one should not criticize. Let the ideas come, do not think about practicability, feasibility, cost, efficiency, nothing. 
just go on creating ideas, we can do that evaluation in the later stage. The third principle is speculation. Speculation is imagining something. So, go with free associations. Just think about new ideas. Now, Boris Decker has given wonderful lines. He says, wonder, wonder, wonder with me. Wonder means create, generate new ideas. So, wonder, wonder, wonder with me because wonderment is fancy free. You do not have to pay, is not it, for just imagining. So, wonder, wonder, wonder with me, wonderment is fancy free, but what you wonder today is tomorrow's reality. Many things we did not have in the past. Say for example, our favorite mobile, it is in the hand of everybody now. So, was it in the existence 100 years back? No, but somebody must have imagined, must, somebody must have speculated and then that invention started and now it is replacing all other digital devices. So, speculation is important, whether it will come into existence that can be seen later on. Now, synectics depends upon metaphoric activity, it is about use of analogies different type of analogies, we are going to see it later. Connect the familiar concepts with unfamiliar and besides that introducing the conceptual distance. This metaphoric activity introduces conceptual distance between the learner and the object. Say for example, joining two different things together, that is the meaning of synectics, right? So, think about horse and think about chair. Chair is what we sit on and horse we ride on it. We are continuously moving when we sit on the horse. How about joining these two things which are really distant together? So, we get that famous toy for children which is horse shape which moves all the time, but the child can comfortably sit and enjoy. Now, besides that, making familiar things or familiar concept unfamiliar. For example, we all know school, we are familiar, we have experienced it, but if we compare it or if we see the school as fruit market, what is a fruit market? There are so many different kinds of fruits available. They are different in shape, different in color, different in taste, every fruit is unique. In the same way, the school has unique combination of so many children, so many students. Every student is different in his personality, in his abilities, in his interest, but together they form a school. Metaphors help learners to connect two absolutely diverse ideas with each other and give new perspective for looking towards things and that is why metaphors are to be used. Now, Gordon suggests use of analogies to generate ideas and novel solutions to the problem under consideration. Now, what type of analogies he are thinking about? Gordon suggests three type of analogies. First is direct analogy, second is personal analogy and third is compressed conflict. We will see one by one what he actually means. Now, direct analogy is comparison between two concepts. It is just like transposing condition of one problem situation to another. Let us see some examples. We are all familiar with helmet, it protects our head, but how this idea was created? Bird watchers watched woodpecker. Now, this woodpecker continuously pecks, he pecks hard to the wood, but still 
it does not harm or hurt his head. So, what is the structure of his brain and skull? So, scientists were more curious to know about it and so they studied that structure and on the basis of that they prepared helmet which protects our head. So, this is direct analogy using the idea of specific skull structure of woodpecker to prepare helmet. There are some more examples. We all know about nails. They are used everywhere while preparing furniture and uh, so many things. Previously, the nails were used to be of iron. Now, iron nails have two limitations. One is they are hard, so they cannot bend immediately. That is first thing. Besides that, they are rotten. Rust is another limitation. So, the idea came by watching the grass. Now, that grass leaf, it is flexible, but somewhat sturdy. So, can we prepare nails something like that? And then aluminum nails came into existence. They are sturdy, but they can be bent and for all electrical wiring such nails are used. So, this is another example. Now, remember the tan. Now, usually they are used in war situation. And the wars are not conducted in some smooth ground and something. Usual vehicle, it has got wheels. So, it needs smooth path to rotate. But in war situation, we would not get such plain ground. So, what is the solution to this problem? Now, engineers, they watched the snake. The snake can go anywhere. It does not need really the smooth path. Why is it so? Because it does not have legs. His complete body, it touches the ground and that is why it can go anywhere. So, can we prepare some such surface? And that is why in tank, if you observe, there are wheels no doubt because the tank has to go forward. But there is a complete rotating flexible belt around those wheels and that is why this solution came into existence. Another analogy Gordon has suggested is personal analogy. What does it mean? It means stepping into another person's shoes that is the usual phrase we use. This is the same type of technique. So, going into or stepping into that particular object's role, that is personal analogy. Now, here the person empathizes with that particular object and he tries to get the same feelings, emotions. So, actually he becomes part of that physical element or that problem. So, while using personal analogy, Gordon insists on loss of self. Because there is greater conceptual distance, the person has to go into that role. Sometimes the analogy is totally new. So, it is useful to empathize with that particular analogy proves that learners are creative, innovative. In usual school also, sometimes autobiography of uh, a fort, some such experiences are given to children. It is similar to it. Now, the third important technique Gordon suggests is compressed conflict. There are two conflicting words. They have opposite meaning, but they are used together. So, it is combining two frames 
or references with an object. So, using contrast words to make it more meaningful, we can see some examples, healing knife. Now, usually knife cuts, it gives wounds, but if the knife is in the hands of a surgeon, then it is definitely healing knife. Old youth, the person is old, but he is youthful, known surprise. So, all these are examples of compressed conflict. So, if the person is able to use such compressed conflict in his writing, in solving problem, then he comes up with some new idea. Gordon also suggests to use free associations. Do not think of any practicability, feasibility of the problem and just go wild with ideas. Say for example, how about having new color to walls every day? Is it feasible? You all will love. But if the person thinks of having such condition, what he can do? He does not have to actually change the color every day. It is not possible also, but to get a different feel to that particular room, he can use different color, different colored um, curtains. So, that will go give different look to the room. He can give different lighting effect, that is possible. That also changes the look of the walls. He can use different accessories. So, such ideas can be brought later, but first the person should go with free associations. Now, there are two strategies or models of teaching of the same thing that is synectics. It is for creating something new that is making the familiar unfamiliar and second is making the strange familiar. Now, this first strategy it is creating something new, it helps create conceptual distance, it helps develop new understanding or empathize. Also it is guarding against premature analysis and closure. Now let us take one example of it, what is making familiar unfamiliar? I will give you one example, suppose there is a bird in the cage, the bird is very happy because it is safe, secured, it gets everything and he can take rest. But writers have written or used this analogy to the other problems. Suppose the country is suffering from dependency it is under other country's rule and if the people in the country, they are feeling like bird, very safe, secure, is it okay? No. Even if they are safe, they are secure, they are getting certain things, they are losing their independence, they are not free, they are not free to think, they are not free to behave the way they like. It is, there is no democracy, they do not have voices. So, making the familiar unfamiliar, that is one way or one type of model. Now, what are the strategies used here? In phase 1, description of present condition and so, teacher has students describe situation or situation as they see it now. In phase 2, direct analogy is used. So, students suggest direct analogies. So, different objects, living or non living, they suggest them. They select one and explore it further. They try to relate those objects with the problem under consideration. In phase 3, students become the analogy, 
because they are going into personal analogy. So, they empathize with one or more objects. While describing certain things in direct and personal analogy, they come up with different phrases, different terms, different words. So, in the fourth phase in compressed conflict, students take their description from phases 2 and 3 and suggest several compressed conflicts and choose one or more to describe the problem. Again in phase 5, if required, they again can go for direct analogy. They generate and select another direct analogy based on the compressed conflict. In phase 6, there is a re-examination of the original task. So, teacher has students move back to original task or problem. Phase 6 is re-examination of original task. So, here the teacher has students move back to original task or problem and use the last analogy and or entire synaptics experience. This was one type of synaptics. What is another one? Another one is making the strange familiar. So, such type of exercise helps students understand and internalize the problem. Here also metaphor is used for analysis. The strategy is analytic, convergent. Let us see one example for making the strange familiar. We all know that mathematics is abstract and usually students think that language is different and mathematics is a different type of subject. But if we can explain the students that mathematics also is a language, he won't believe. He will say that in language we have nouns and proper nouns and adjectives and complete sentences and phrases and adjectives. But we can convince the students that in mathematics also the same type of structure is there. Mathematics is also a language. How? Our sentences in language start with nouns. In the same way, in mathematics, 5, 9, 7, these are nouns. Even A, X, B, these are also nouns. Now, what is the difference? Now, say for example, Sunita, Bhargav, these are proper nouns, but girl, girl can be anybody any and that is why it is common noun. In the same way in mathematics 5, 7, they have proper meaning, exact value and that is why they can be said as proper nouns. But x, a, these variables can take any value and that is why they can be called as common nouns. Now, what about adjectives? Beautiful Sunita, beautiful girl. So, beautiful is adjective. In the same way, when we say 5 a minus 3 x, so minus 3 and 5, they are describing more about that common noun and so they are adjective in case of mathematics. In mathematics, there are sentences. Say for example, if we say x plus 5, it does not have any meaning. In languages, the verb completes the meaning. In the same way in mathematics, if we say x plus 5 is equal to 9, then that is equal to, it plays the role of verb. And that is why it is mathematical verb. X is less than 9. So, that less than, greater than, they are also verbs. So, we can see that 
mathematics is strange, abstract, but we can convince the students that they are also sort of languages. So, this was example of making the strange familiar. In making the strange familiar also, again the same type of analogies are to be used, direct analogy, personalization of direct analogy and besides that identification and explanation of points. Here while making the strange familiar, difference between analogies is described. So, we can also explain the difference between sentences in languages and sentences in mathematics and there is also scope for suggesting and analyzing familiar analogy. Now, in this strategies too, we can use different phases. So, first is substantive input, teacher provides information on new topic. In phase 2, direct analogy is used. So, teacher suggests direct analogy and ask students to describe the analogy. In phase 3, personal analogy has scope. So, teacher has students become the direct analogy. First strategy, it is the same that the student enters into the role of that particular object or analogy. In phase 4, comparing analogy. So, students identify and explain the points of similarity between the new material and the direct analogy. In phase 5, there is scope for explaining the differences. So, student explains where the analogy does not fit. So, he compares and finds out the differences or diversity. In phase 6, there is exploration. So, students re-explore the original topic on its own term. And in the last phase, generating analogy, again students provide their own direct analogy and explore the similarities and differences and this process goes on because they can give or create several analogies until they come to the particular solution. Every model has some effects or benefits we can say. We all know that there are instructional benefits, instructional effects and nurturant effects. So, what are the effects of this particular model? What objectives will be achieved by implementing this model in the classroom? You can see that instructional and nurturant effects are shown here. Instructional effects are shown with arrow. So, it develops general creative capacity and also creative capacity in the subject domain. So, suppose we are using it in languages, then it develops general creative capacity of generating many ideas, but besides that, that language creativity that also develops. The nurturant effects are shown with dotted arrow. What are they? Definitely, the achievement in the subject increases because the child starts developing new insight in the subject. Besides that, as we have seen earlier that Gordon emphasizes group work or group thinking and that is why group cohesion and productivity that also is another nurturant effect. Thus, students, we have discussed a lot about synectics model. William Gordon, he generated this particular model. We have seen assumptions and how it is beneficial by using direct analogy, personal analogy, compressed conflict and mostly it is for developing creative imagination of the students. Thank you.